The Lord be with you. Amen. 
I'm glad to be back. I know most of you didn't even know I was gone, but... Uh, we are going to, today is a really great privilege, we're going to have five baptisms. And we'll try to get you out by noon. <laughs> five baptisms. Sue Lee is married to David Nesty, and Sue will be baptized along with their four children. So it'll be fun. Today is a, an exciting day. Our gospel text is the story of the bent over woman and how Jesus straightened her up. And we see in the story that there was somebody else who was all bent out of shape over that. And we'll see what that means for us. Let's uh, begin our worship service by singing the first two verses of our baptismal hymn, Please Rise. explain a few things. Sue is from Thailand and uh, she and David have been coming to Messiah uh, encouraged by Donna, David's mother and we spent six or eight weeks on Tuesday evenings in their home learning about the Christian faith as we Lutherans understand it and I think that was a good time. <laughs> so here we are today. Dear friends, we rejoice today that Sue Lee, Memphis, Farah, Miles, and Willow, through baptism, are becoming members of the body of Christ and inheritors of God's kingdom. It is an opportunity for all of us to renew our faith. So I ask, what can we do to become children of God? Is that what happens in baptism? So Sue, I'm about to tell you what membership requires and therefore you and David will have that understanding also for your children. Here are your responsibilities. To live among God's faithful people. 
to come with them, to come with your family to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach one another the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to read and place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and be a loving family nurtured in faith and prayer, so that Sue, Memphis, Farah, Miles, and Willow may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to grow in the Christian faith and life and help one another grow in the Christian faith and life? I ask that of David and Sue. People of God, do you promise to support Sue, Memphis, Pharaoh, Miles, and Willow and pray for them in their new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? David and Sue, you are to say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Let us con confess the faith we believe. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. And the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the water for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up, raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. All right. How about we go oldest to youngest? So Sue, you are first. this over a little bit. Suli, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Memphis. Memphis, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Miles, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Vera, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Willow. <laughs> oh. Hi, Willow. Willow, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Willow, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Vera, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Miles, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Memphis, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let's, uh, let us pray. In fact, if we can all hold hands. <laughs> Gracious God, we thank you for making Sue, Memphis, Miles, Farah, and Willow your own and raising them up to a new life through baptism. Pour out your Holy Spirit and strengthen them, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Amen. And now watch Vicki. She's going to hand you each a, a candle. This lighted candle is given to you, Sue Lee, Memphis, Farah, Miles, and Willow, to remind you that the light of the world has come into your life. You are to let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We, we welcome, welcome you into, into the, the body, body of Christ, Christ and, and into, into the, the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Congregation, please rise. Oh. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. God's peace, Sue. God's, God's peace, Willow. God's peace. They did really well. God's peace. God's peace to you. God's peace. God's peace. We'll continue to worship by singing the last verse of the hymn, the baptismal hymn.
be with you. And also with you. Oh God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. from Isaiah. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests <clears throat> on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, in the holy day of the Lord, honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, 
and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. reading from Hebrews. <clears throat> you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire, a darkness, a gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. Even if an animal touches the mountains, it will be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet no more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet no more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that whatever cannot be shaken will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke, the thirteenth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just when there appeared a woman, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, 
There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward. Good morning. Aren't baptisms fun? Yeah, I think so. So what do I have here? <laughs> Very good, Carter. It's a bent spoon. What is a bent spoon good for? Uh, kind of, I don't know if you could use it as a ladle. To me, a bent spoon is not good for anything. What needs to happen? Well, when Jesus saw a bent woman, it wasn't that she wasn't good for anything, but being bent way over. Can you imagine being stooped way over? You couldn't do much, could you? Some people who have a condition that bends them way over, they can't even eat. They have a hard time eating because they're so bent over. She was like that for 18 years. How many of you are 18 years old? No, for longer than you've been alive, she was bent over. So Jesus touched her, and she straightened out. And now, she was good for all kinds of things. I can eat my Cheerios now, right? So Jesus gave that woman a better life. And that's what Jesus wants for all of us. That's why we come to worship. Because Jesus wants for us a better life. Do you know who else was bent, bent out of shape, though? A man like me, a big shot in the church, got angry with Jesus for working on Sunday. So he was all bent out of shape. He wasn't good for much either but we'll talk about that later. Remember, God wants a good life for you. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God. Gracious God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. We thank you that Jesus straightened up the bent over woman. We thank you that Jesus straightened up the bent over woman. We're thankful that he wants the best, wanted the best for her. We're thankful that he wanted the best for her. And you want the best for us. And you want the best for us. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My sermon today is God's demands versus God's character.
All right. Laws. The law is good. I think we can all uh, agree that there are laws that are very good for us. Most times, our laws are good. Schaefer Trail in um, Canyonlands National Park. That's Schaefer Trail. I don't know if you can see. That's a little car right up there. Oh, boy. And Tracy knows one of the things is not working. I'm sorry. But that's a little car up there. We were thankful that they had rules. By the way, look at how narrow that little road is. We passed a big dump truck on that little narrow road. It was uh, a terrible half hour. A 1,500 foot drop in a half, half mile or about a mile. It was good to have laws though. Be in a, a four wheel drive vehicle with uh, reasonable tires and all that. All right. So those laws were good. Sometimes good things, even good laws, can be bad. Uh, good things can be bad. This I saw on a billboard in Utah. Texting while driving can make good people look bad. Jesus goes to the synagogue one day. It happened to be the day of worship. He walks in and he sees a woman bent over. He goes over and straightens her out, heals her, cures her of this infirmity. He's scolded now for working on the Sabbath. Are Sabbath laws good? Yes, they are. All these laws were developed to help us follow God's intention in the world. Laws are good. And they got to the point of then describing, uh, they wanted to be good, they wanted to make sure everyone was able to follow God's law, so they even said things like, you can walk 999 steps. Somebody must have determined that uh, in a given day, everything that needs to be done for your existence can be done in 999 steps. If you take that thousandth step, you are now working, breaking the Sabbath. Now, we might say that's a little silly and a little arbitrary, but their intention was very good. But aren't we sometimes like that man, who the, the synagogue leader, who want to do good so desperately that we overreact? Bad things happen. Negative, the negative things happen. Let me give you some examples. For instance, we want our children to be nice. The danger often is that we overreact, overdisciplined. Um, sometimes injure their spirits, their, their attitude about life. They're not as uh, bold and capable of God, as God expects them. We want them to be good students, and sometimes we can study so much that we do not know how to interact with people and be good with people. All work and no play, they say, makes Jack a dull boy. So we want, a, we want something good for our families, but we have negative results. Amanda Smith, you can Google and find this, happened up in Iowa. She had an emergency. She was having a gallbladder attack. And she got in her car and was rushing to the emergency room. And on the way, she went a little bit over the speed limit. A police officer pulls her over 
And she described herself as just shaking because she was in pain and she was experiencing another symptom. Everything wanted to leave her body, so she was trying to hold everything in at the same time. And this police officer comes up and he says, uh, Ma'am, you were speeding. And she hurriedly explained her situation. And he said, Well, I can tell, you, tell that you're in pain. Uh, next time, call an ambulance. I'll let you go on your way. Here's my card. Call me so I can deliver your ticket. So she got to the emergency room, got taken care of, stabilized, sent home, calls the officer, can you meet on Wednesday afternoon? I'm going to visit my son. No, no, can't meet Wednesday, or can't meet Monday. It's my day off. Tuesday, there was some other complication. Wednesday, when she was going to have surgery, he met her in the hall as she was being pushed down the hall in the gurney and gave her her ticket on the way into surgery. Now, isn't that silly? Don't we think? The law, do not speed, is good. It's necessary for human safety. But the officer, maybe, should have said, under the circumstances, human safety might be best served by just getting you to the hospital. Maybe, just maybe, he could have turned on his siren and his lights and escorted her to the emergency room. Sometimes the law, the good law, can get in the way. What was Jesus Point, how was, was, what was Jesus pointing out about the character of God? That God cares about the law, yes, but he cares more about we humans, about you and I. So he quotes from the Hebrew scriptures, does he not? He simply says, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water. He's showing God's law made provision for us to care for our animals on the Sabbath. And if we care for our animals, if God cares for our animals, just think how much more he must care for humans. God's care for people is central. Rules and regulations are important, but the only thing that really matters to God is God's people. Jesus showed up on the Sabbath, saw a need. By the way, that's what I put here, worship laws. What laws do we have about worship? We gather. We gather to meet God in this place. We meet God through word, through sacrament, through greeting and our care for one another. But most importantly, we as God's people need to meet and greet and care for everyone who God sends our way on the Sabbath. It doesn't matter whether it's traditional worship, contemporary worship, all those things can happen. So Jesus saw a need, fulfilled God's dream for that woman. What's God's dream for that woman? It's God's dream for each and every one of us. That your life will be good. Your life will be better than it is. We don't always see. The synagogue leader did not. Do we always care for people? I was in the, our child care center a couple of weeks ago. 
go in there and I usually spend 10 minutes in my grandson's room, even though he doesn't pay attention to me, everybody else does. And I'm leaving, I'm going, oh, I've spent too much time, I've got to get back. And as I'm leaving, on the side, I see one of the little girls in another room standing in the doorway. And she calls my name. She had been waiting there because she saw me go into the other room. And I'm thinking, I don't have time. So I, I'm going to zip by. She couldn't see me in the hallway anymore. And I'm going, no, I better go back. And I did. And she grabbed my leg and she said, oh, Pastor Dan, I thought you didn't hear me. And I'm thinking, no, I heard you. <laughs> right? Aren't we that way? Too often. It's like God's way. God cares more about people than he does about our busy schedules, our rules, and our regulations. Jesus wants us to see and help fulfill God's dream. God's dream that all people have a good life that all people have a better life. We can't do that on our own. With God's help, we can. That's why we come here. God, I need your help to help. Michael B. Curry, bishop in the, in the Episcopal Church, tells a story about being leading a mission group in Botswana, in southern Africa. And all they went on this trip to do was to visit child care facilities. The HIV AIDS epidemic had killed so many parents and left children in orphanages. And sometimes the parents were still alive, but because they had HIV AIDS, they were having a difficult time caring for the children. And he said, the last child care center they stopped at, uh, they sang some songs and they sang Jesus loved me and he was so impressed with that and all the other children were told to go and play. And one little girl got up and he saw her sitting there with her legs in a funny position, but she had two crush it, crutches. And she very labor laboriously got up on her crutches and she went off to play with the children. And he said to the director, tell me about that child. And he said, our volunteers go out into the villages every day looking for children that need our help. This child could not walk when they found her. This child was in her bed all day long when they found her. And they said, she needs to come to our orphanage. And she's making progress. She can walk now. And then Michael Curry says he saw her fall when she went to play with the children and he so desperately wanted to go help her up. He said, no, watch. And she laboriously put her crutch up and then climbed up the crutch and grabbed the other one and went on her way. He was told she needs to do it on her own. We want her to get better. And this is what he said was their rule now for their center. We believe that God has something better in store for every child. And it's our job to help each child find out what it is and then rise up and live. 
And we could say, we could say that Jesus teaches us that God has something better in store, not only for every child, but every person, each and every one of us. And it's up to us to help the children, help one another, realize and find what that better something is. Amen. Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all languages, we pray with and for Christians in worship all over the world. Make your church joyful to reflect the diversity of your people and the unity of your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your spirit speaks in creation. We thank you for watered gardens, for abundant yield, for clean water, for sunlight, for communities where people and nature live in peace together. Lord, in your mercy. Remove the yoke of destructive partisanship, the pointing of the finger at our enemies, and bless nations in need. We remember nations where terror is faced every day, especially Turkey, after this most recent bombing that killed 50 people at a wedding. We pray for your peace. Hear us, Lord, in your mercy. Bring strength, health, and wholeness in our lives. Bless and surround with care and hope those in need this day 
especially. Meredith Adams, Jim Allen, Cindy Anderson, Leo Biella, Bryce Bauer, Carolyn Callen, Dennis Chappelle, Chappelle Jan Pam Cole, Dean Crane, Sandy Drake, Jeff Dykeman, Mark Henson, Dennis Hess, Janelle Joshwick, Alan Kamens, Carolyn Lohmeyer, Annabelle Moore, Wayne Myers, Jan Snaff, Sean S Snellen, Lucy Stilwell, Lawrence Til Tillotson, Linnea Ugla, Joyce Ugla, Kathy Zinter, and Tom Cobb. Are there any others? We bless and give you thanks, O oh God. Yes, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, especially for Sue and her family, Memphis, Farrah, Miles, and Willow, baptized today. Bless them in their new life in Christ. We thank you for people young and old, women and men, who have witnessed to your love, and we remember those who have recently died. We thank Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trust in your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. O oh God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I only have a couple of announcements. The first of which is we are going to have a baptismal celebration at the coffee hour. So go grab a piece of cake or a cupcake and we'll celebrate with uh, Sue Lee and all her children, the, the nesties, as well as the entire family over there. There is also um, this evening there will be Committee chairs are meeting, and that is going to be followed by committees, everyone on a committee. Go ahead, Sue. Right. Just want to say a welcome to all of you that are here for the baptism today. This is a wonderful day, and uh, something that you'll remember, I'm sure, forever. And we have a little gift for the children, Sue. and. Um, I may have gotten one of the names wrong as far as the gender, so I'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you all. And Grandma. <laughs> all right. Is it working on the Sabbath if we fix that projector before the next service? Oh well. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah.